Hi guys, this is gsnlone.com and I'm here with a handset called Fairphone 2 for a presentation. Not exactly a review, so we're doing here a bit of a showcasing of this unusual device's features. This is a truly modular phone meant for easy repair and it's made with ethically sourced minerals and fair trade gold recycled materials. It was showcased all over the world. It debuted in December 2015 and is priced at around 500 and $40 or so. So uh, about 40k units were shipped as of May last year and Fairphone is a social enterprise company started off with crowdfunding in 2013 and the phone has spare parts so you can replace those with damage or perform future upgrades. Okay so let's turn the phone off and see what the fuss is about. So Fairphone has made two phones so far together they've passed 120k units shipped they became quite famous. This handset has a 5 inch full HD screen with Gorilla Glass 3 protection and inside there's the Qualcomm Snapdragon 801 processor which uh, actually was also found on the Galaxy S5 and other flagships from 3 years ago. 2GB of RAM and 32GB of storage and time to take it apart which is the actual kicker and selling point of the Fairphone 2. Ok so we remove the plastic back cover we proceed to remove the battery which is a 2420 mAh lithium ion unit here and now the really interesting bit so you can remove the frame which is what I'm doing right now taking apart and now another bit of cool stuff so we have here those two uh, pull mechanisms if you pull them to the center like this and like this you should be able to slide the back portion from the screen panel easily and here you go now using a screwdriver you can mess about with all these modular parts this is actually the display panel which you can see here the most costly component component from all the handset and here you have the other parts so we got the display we got the camera module we've got the core module the top module which is uh, um, 25 euros as far as I know and the bottom module which is uh, 20 euros and the battery which is also about 20 euros the most costly one of them is the 85 euro screen panel and of course there's also the camera module which is priced at around 34 euros now if you take a screwdriver and remove those screws you can disassemble this part uh, this part here as well and this one here as well the core module is I'm guessing this one here Pretty interesting, pretty cool if you ask me. I've seen modular phones before but none of them like this one and it's very cool to service your own device, replace your parts and maybe in the future even perform upgrades. So as I will uh, reattach it I'm going to tell you about its specs, 2GB of RAM, 32GB of storage and micro SD card slot. Um, we also have an 8 megapixel back camera with f2.2 aperture and the front camera is a 2 megapixel shooter both of them have uh, omni vision sensors ok so trying to put this frame back on onto the buttons checking if they respond well to my touch everything is fine and the battery you saw before uh, we tested it for a bit so after taking about 60 pictures in the park and 4 videos doing 1 hour of internet browsing, 5 benchmarks and 1 game we lost about 50% of the battery and the battery charges in about 2 hours so that's it as far as the battery life is concerned now on the connectivity front we got a micro USB 2.0 port at the bottom with USB OTG, there's Wi-Fi A, B, G, N, A, C, Bluetooth, LTE category 4, dual SIM slots there's GPS and the whole gizmo measures 11 millimeters in thickness and weighs 170 grams which is quite massive for a 5 incher of course it's not the looker but it's the unicity that counts here it ran on android 5.1 got updated to 6.0 and now let's have a quick gander at the screen we're dealing with here so i'm going to use photos we go here we use our usual test sample i would say that the colors are pretty vivid pretty okay we got wide view angles and the brightness is i would say reasonable for a mid-range phone and the contrast is uh, pretty unimpressive we didn't have time to take a lux meter test but i would say that the screen is reasonable and that's it now the actual performance is quite good we didn't experience any lag we could run games okay we even did a few benchmarks and we have them here 
Um, so for example in 3D Mark I Storm Unlimited we had 16k points which is above the Asus Zenfone 3 and the Motorola Moto Z Play and here is the Geekbench 4 test we surpassed the Huawei Nova and the Blackberry Passport for example and we also have the famous Antutu benchmark 58k points quite impressive above the Huawei Nova Plus and below the Sony Xperia Z5 and keep in mind that the quadrant wouldn't run and we also ran into some problems with the GFX bench which would not connect to the server it may be their fault we're also doing some gaming here without problems and one thing I noticed, even though the benchmarks perform quite well, and I would put this on par with my own Galaxy S5, well, um, it gets a bit heated when you're playing games for a longer while and uh, doing more intensive tasks like benchmarks. However, having a Galaxy S5 with the same CPU and the same amount of RAM and the same GPU, I would say it's still a reputable gaming machine and that will not be a problem for at least one year. So Fairphone 2 fares well in the gaming department. Okay, so we handled gaming, we handled the battery for a bit, as I told you before, lost 50% after a few picks and so. Now it's time to listen to some tunes. We got some music here and I'm going to turn the volume all the way up and check this out. The speaker is here, maybe muffled on a flat surface. Okay, so the volume is reasonable, uh, the bass is basically non-existent, needs more bass and the high notes were heard pretty okay. No time for a decibel meter test, this is a presentation, not a review, but we do have, or we should have, an equalizer and here we go. You can boost stuff up from here and now we proceed further to the camera and got a pretty straightforward and stock interface as you can see here. You saw a bunch of options like photosphere, panorama, lens blur, camera and video and a few extras here. I won't bore you with them, I will dive straight into the photos department and show you a few, only a few samples. Ok, so it was a very sunny day and the phone has a tendency to oversaturate things, however not as bad as you'd imagine. This is an HDR sample, a few pretty good uh, close-ups which are good enough for Facebook and the selfies were well, for a 2 megapixel camera it takes quite good selfies. And these are more shots taken with the main 8 megapixel camera. As you can see, this green is quite burnt, the panorama looks quite swell. A few more selfies for the ego. And I would say reasonable details for an 8 megapixel shooter. And we also have some swans here. We saw them swimming around, couldn't help it and achieved some pretty good shots once again for an 8 megapixel camera. I would say it's on par with maybe the iPhone 4s or the iPhone 5 but nothing more than that. A few more shots here and that's the daytime capture. It's the basic package you'd get on an 8 megapixel camera phone. Now the actual surprise came when we shot video in MP4 format, Full HD with 20 mega per second bitrate, not bad zoom, some minor refocusing and uh, there's a bit of burn but nothing truly severe. The clarity was great, even the uh, electronic image stabilization was quite nice. I like the focus, I like the exposure, so not bad filming in the end. And we also filmed more colorful stuff, like these toys. I know the background is burnt, but overall not exactly bad. Ok, so we messed around with the camera enough, pretty ok selfies and ok close-ups. Now the software, you can probably tell it's quite stock, not much bloatware, not much of everything here. And we're running on Android 6.0.1 Marshmallow, stock with all the stock apps, plus or minus iFixit. And that's it, in a nutshell you get your YouTube, you get a special updater, you get the Play Suite got Gmail, Maps and so forth and a pretty fluid experience. The core of the phone remains of course its upgradable and repairable nature, you saw me before dismantling it in a couple of seconds which is totally impressive plus there's the conflict free aspect, I'm talking about materials and the phone is supposed to last you 3 to 5 years. It's nice to see some innovation, something different, fresh and young, it's not the best looking phone on the market but it's certainly a unique modular phone. And this has been the presentation of the Fairphone 2 
we like innovation and we liked to see it here at uh, gsmdome.com and give it a peek after all it shipped around 120,000 units and that's got to count for something i'm talking about the fairphone one and two this has been it from us it's got galaxy s5 specs and a promising future bye bye